This video will be introducing you to the clinical investigation of pachymetry. Pachymetry is the measurement of corneal thickness. The cornea is a transparent dome-shaped layer that forms the front surface of the eye. It has many important roles, including focusing images onto the retina. The thickness of the cornea varies between individuals. However, the average thickness is 545 microns. Corneal thickness is important to note during ophthalmic investigations, as it may influence other clinical findings, most commonly a patient's intraocular pressure or commonly known as IOP. IOP is the pressure of the eye that keeps it adequately inflated. This is regulated by the production and secretion of a fluid known as aqueous humor. IOP is important because if it is too high or too low, it can eventually lead to eye diseases which can severely degrade vision if it is not managed. IOP readings are linked to corneal thickness and thus interpretation of IOP readings may vary. Therefore, it is important to measure a patient's corneal thickness which can be done through an instrument called a pachymeter. Pachymetry readings can be taken before or after IOP readings, as research has shown there is no variation in measurements. There are many brands and types of pachymeters. However, for the purposes of this video, we will be using and discussing the settings of the pachymeter brand Tacmate DGH55. The parts are as follows. This indicates the detachable probe that will be coming into contact with the patient's eye. The display screen will present the final measurement and any errors. This delete button will erase a single measurement if it is not needed. The clear button will erase all measurements. This is the configuration button. The enter button shows battery status and when pressed and held, and held down will display IP correction configuration. OS will display the readings of the left eye and OD will display readings of the right eye. The up and down buttons are used to scroll through individual measurements or see options. The power button will turn on the packmate and turn it off when pressed and held down for a few seconds. Before the next patient is called, the packmate probe should be cleaned with an alcohol wipe so that no cross-contamination occurs between patients. If there is enough time, you can leave the probe to air dry. However, if needed for the next patient, a tissue can be used to wipe it dry so that alcohol burns are avoided. After cleaning, press the power key. A beep will sound and the pachymeter will display the battery status. It is now ready to use. It is important to inform the patient what it is you will be performing and why this is important. Reassure them that the assessment will not be painful. Hi, my name is Georgia. I will be your student proctologist for today. We're going to be doing a little test with this instrument here. And what this does, it's going to measure the front surface of your eye, which is your cornea. When we get this reading from this instrument, um, we'll be using it for another test that we'll do that measures your eye pressure. And the information we get from here will help us interpret the results further. Okay? Now, we're going to be using these drops, and that's going to numb your eye. And then that way it won't hurt when we use the, the instrument. Um, and then with the drops, it will also sting a little bit, but that's all. Okay? As the pachymeter will be touching the cornea of the patient, anaesthetic will need to be instilled in the patient's eyes. For hygiene purposes, ensure that the cap of the alkane is held and not placed on the table. Okay, so now we're going to be putting the numbing drops into your eye. Remember, they are going to sting a little bit, okay? I'll give you a tissue. Just hold that, and then when I put them in, you can just dab your eye, okay? So I'll get you to look up for me. Okay. Good. Okay, and you can dab if you like with the tissue. Yeah. You are now ready to begin applinating. In clinic, it is standard to assess the right eye first. Applinate by holding the pachymeter like a pen at a 90 degree angle to the cornea. 
ensuring that the flat tip is touching the patient's cornea. Okay, so just looking over my shoulder into the distance for me, okay? I'm just going to grab your lids up here. Remember not to apply too much pressure to the eye and do not move the probe while it is touching the cornea as this may lead to a corneal abrasion. When the probe is properly aligned with the patient's cornea, the pachymeter will take measurements and you will hear continuous short beeps which indicate that each measurement has been taken followed by two long beeps, which indicate that all measurements have been taken successfully. Let's keep looking forward. The pachymeter will take 25 separate measurements and it will average them. This average will be shown on the display along with the standard deviation. The pachymeter will then prompt you to measure the left eye. If you are not applanating correctly or are in the wrong position on the cornea for 3 seconds, you will hear a long beep. You will need to take the probe off the patient's eye and adjust your position. The display will indicate poor applanation. You can record your results as follows, ensuring that you write CCT and writing your measurements in microns. Remember to include which eye you are writing the measurement down for. Corneal thickness allows us to interpret IOP measurements. This is because corneal thickness can affect the measurement of IOP. Thinner corneas being less than 545 microns lead to an underestimation of the IOP measurement and thicker corneas overestimate the IOP readings. This table shows you how to adjust IOP readings according to the corneal thickness measurement. For example, if you found that your patient had an IOP reading of 21 millimeters of mercury, but found they have a corneal thickness of 615 microns, then you would take away five millimeters of mercury from their reading, and this will give you 16. This highlights the significance of pachymetry, as an IOP reading may indicate that a patient is at high risk of an eye disease, such as glaucoma. But when their IOP is adjusted according to their corneal thickness, previous IOP reading will be inaccurate. However, corneal thickness cannot be implicated as a risk factor for glaucoma independently. In summary, clinical assessments with an orthoptist or ophthalmologist should include a measure of the patient's corneal thickness along with their IOP. This is due to the fact that IOP may be overestimated or underestimated depending on the patient's corneal thickness. This may lead to incorrect diagnosis of eye disorders based on incomplete clinical investigations. Thank you for watching and we hope you found this video useful.